Another episode of Words of Grace starts now, featuring a new grace-filled message each week as Acts 433 Church brings the gospel to you through the teaching ministry of Dr. Matthew Webster. As always, it is great to be with you in the Making Disciple series. I pray that you've had the opportunities to respond by bringing the love of Jesus Christ into someone else's life, and that this series has been the catalyst to do just that. Now the message today is kind of like a part two from week five in this series. We were talking about praying for more disciples, and I had such an emphasis on that and, and the importance of that prayer. And I realized that there's some other parts of that text that are very, very important. So I want to spend some more time in Luke chapter 10 together. And so, uh, and I know that our praying for more disciples is so important because as we do that, it makes us ready for when God sends them and we'll become active in making disciples. Today, when we think about Jesus and his discipling that he did on this earth, we often think about the 12. And no doubt, those are the ones that once Jesus' public ministry began, they were with him the most. They were learning from him. However, Jesus didn't just work with the 12. So let's go to the text to learn something of the others that Jesus taught. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Some texts say 72, some say 70, but as I said in week 5, I believe it was 70 because this is how many Gentile nations there were at this time. During the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, they would sacrifice 70 bullets on behalf of the Gentile nations for their atonement. God was even providing for the Gentiles even before Christ went to the cross. Right away, we discover that Jesus was actively working with more than just 12 men. There were 70, or as some manuscripts say, 72. But let's expand this out even further. We know from his relationship with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and others that Jesus wasn't secluding himself just to 12 people. Jesus influenced and taught men, women, and even children. Jesus himself said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Matthew 19, 14. So because we've already looked at the intricacies of the sending out of the 70, I want to focus today on the fact the 70s faith were strengthened before they were sent because they were about to be involved in God's miracle working power. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. That's Luke 10, 9. The mission that Jesus gave the 70 is the same mission that he gave the 12. And it's the same mission that he has given to you. Go and make disciples. And we can do that as we heal others in Jesus' name. Imagine if God healed someone's cancer through you as you laid your hands on them and prayed over them and spoke God's word over their life. How joyful would, you, would that be to partake in such a life-changing, miraculous event? Luke writes that the 70 returned with joy because that's what they did and that's what we're called to do. They were exhilarated that God used them in such ministry, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name, Luke 10, 17. One of the things that is important for us to understand in this text, that it doesn't give to us a time frame of when these events would unfold for the 70. It just says that it would happen. And a lot of times when we read a text like this, we think that, oh, they went and immediately all these miracles unfolded. Uh, but 
And, and sometimes we can even get discouraged when things aren't happening as quickly as we might expect or desire as we go. But when we read this passage, I want you to know that it doesn't tell us a time frame of when these things unfolded for them. While it might have happened immediately for some, it probably wasn't the norm for most. In fact, Bridgeway's commentary in the Bible said, though many months probably passed before they returned. You see, they were building relationships. They were uh, waiting for things to unfold that the, that the, the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit would, would bring about uh, as, as they went. Now, the Holy Spirit didn't fill their hearts at this time, but they would come upon them for special moments like this. So how were the 70 able to do such amazing things in ministry? And then how am I able to be a part of God's miracle working power working through me? I think that's the question that we need to ask. Jesus said, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Luke 10, 18 through 19. You already have the authority to do these great works that Jesus did. But you might just need to have your faith initiated by hearing the word of God. And that's why this is a great week for you to tune in. Because my prayer is that as you hear these very words from the Word of God, that your faith will rise and that you'll believe that God is calling you to work miracles in other people's lives in Jesus' name. And so Romans 10, 17 is clear that faith comes from hearing what is told and what is heard comes from the preaching of the message concerning Christ. That's the Amplified Version of the Bible. And so have you ever felt like you needed more faith? I believe we probably all have felt that way at one time or another. Have you ever looked at yourself and told yourself that if you just had a little more faith, you'd finally see the breakthrough in your own life, a breakthrough in your health, in your finances, maybe in a, a relationship. With more faith, my loved ones could be healed. People could be set free. Lives forever changed. Disciples made. Well, I have good news for you today. Faith is not a struggle. Uh, this is exactly what the scripture shows us. That the hearing of faith and the works of the law are total opposites. That's Galatians 3, 2, and 5. And since the works of the law are about our self-efforts, there is no self-effort in faith, only trust. Look at the 23rd Psalm again. What is our part? Our part is to trust the Good Shepherd. That is why Jesus told the 70, go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves, Luke 10, 3. Now that doesn't sound like it would instill a lot of confidence in the 70, does it? I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. But it did. It actually did instill confidence because they went. So I want to ask the question, where does the protection of the lambs comes from? It most certainly is not from the lambs themselves. I don't care if you have a whole big gathering of lambs, put 20 of them together. Uh, the wolves will just go, yeah, I'll take that one and that one and that one. Thank you very much. You see, the protection uh, of the lambs is not from the lambs themselves, but it comes only from the shepherd. Your protection while embarking on kingdom work isn't from yourself. This is great gospel news because the one who has all authority and all power our great shepherd is watching over and he is protecting you faith is the opposite of the law and that the more people are self-conscious and the more they look at their own self efforts to receive from the lord 
the more that faith is actually depleted from them. You see, God knew what Abram needed was to receive a word from the Lord that would initiate his faith to move. And the same is true for the 70. When we see more of Jesus, and we are more conscious of Jesus being crucified on our behalf, faith will no longer be a barrier to receive God's promises. You say, well, why is that? The more we see what Jesus has done for us, the more we see what Jesus has qualified us for. And the more faith will spring up within us to see miracles break forth. You don't have to wish that you had more faith for whatever miracle you're asking God for right now. You don't have to try to conjure up more faith. Simply see Jesus on the cross for you. And the faith that you need to face any situation or challenge that will come into your life, you'll be able to have enough faith for those because you're looking at Jesus and his grace to you. He is the author and the finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2. The more of Jesus and his love that you hear, the more faith will rise in your heart to go into all the world. Whatever your challenge is today, continue to listen to the gospel of Jesus because it always brings faith and peace and it will always lead you to good success. Luke 10, 4 says, Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Go as you are. You have everything that you need to successfully fulfill your God-given mission. The question, I think, is, well, what baggage do we need to eliminate that doesn't help us on our mission of making more disciples? We might think of baggage as bad things, getting rid of bad stuff, but that's not necessarily true, especially in the context of what was just written. The things that Jesus lists are not bad things at all. In fact, they're the very things that we might think that we need in order to be successful on the mission. Things like a purse, a bag, sandals, uh, etc. But your mission of disciple making is not going to be successful based on what you bring, but based upon the one who is sending you. As we progress, we'll see that Jesus allows uh, his disciples to bypass time-wasting rituals that would keep them from being on mission. It says, do not greet anyone on the road. This sounds like the 70 would have been passing up some great opportunities to make disciples, some prime opportunity, but that's not the case. The Living Bible uh, paraphrases it like this. And don't waste time along the way. Do not allow yourselves to be uh, uh, hung up, held up by time-wasting ceremonies. Be laser-focused. Be on mission. See, the salutation of friends uh, that, was, that happened in this culture was ceremonial, and it took so much time. And it was on this account that our Lord uh, forbade them to, de uh, to delay their journey by stopping to spend so much time greeting everyone along the way. We see a similar uh, direction that's found in 2 Kings 4.29. I was watching a PBS special on Elon Musk, and it was very, very fascinating. They actually interviewed several people uh, who were really close to him, some who worked for him. And one of the things that Elon has been uh, trying to achieve, really working hard after, is to, to get people on the planet Mars, to actually have us set foot on that planet. And he, he knew that the timelines and everything that was uh, projected 
it would take a long time to accomplish this goal. And so he said, no, we've, we've got to be laser focused. We have to be on mission. So he told his workers, he said, if you're at a meeting and this meeting is not, uh, is not a good use of your time, you need to get up and you need to leave that meeting. Don't even say a word. Your time is too precious. We need you to be using your time the best way possible. We need you to be focused on what you excel at. And in some ways, that's super liberating and, and, and freeing. And wouldn't you just love to be able to do that? Just be at a meeting and go, ah, this isn't going anywhere. I, I'm out of here. <laughs> and just walk away. But in a similar fashion, Jesus is saying, man, we, we really have to be focused on what I'm calling you to do. And there's these things that appear to be good, and, and, and they're cultural, but if you keep getting so sucked up in these cultural norms, you, you're going to miss it. You're not going to be able to accomplish what I'm sending you to do. He said, don't, don't waste your time with that. Just keep moving forward. So Elon understood how important uh, each employee is in his goal of getting people on Mars. And so he doesn't want to delay any, any longer. You see, the devil would, decide, would desire that we simply delay kingdom work. That we would get distracted by things that we think we're obligated to do instead. This word from the Lord frees us to always be on mission and to move forward by not allowing distractions to keep us from our calling. Now, this has been one of the hardest things for me to learn to begin to do. But I'm growing in this area, and I pray that you will too, to begin to look at your life through a new lens and things that would obligate us, things that would weigh us down, start to really ask ourselves, do we really need to be involved with that? Do we need to really put all of our time and our energy and our effort into some of these things? Sometimes there are things that we do need to do that we might not enjoy, but there are some things that are keeping us from those very things that God is calling us to do in our lives. And so I'm excited to think about my own life and go back and start to go, well, you know, I don't know if I really need to be involved in that thing. And some of those things can be good, but the good can keep us from the great. So Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, Strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. When God gave us Jesus, He gave us His best, but He also gave us everything that we need. Jesus is our wisdom, our righteousness, our redemption, and our success. Even when it comes to faith, He is your faith, Romans 10:17. When you are fearful of the odds stacked against you, He is your favor. When you are weak, He is your strength. When you are troubled and anxious, He is your peace. When you feel vulnerable, He is your shield. When you're lonely, He is your faithful companion. And when you are sick, He is your healing and your health. And that's why the 70 and their faith was strengthened before they were sent, because they were about to be involved in God's miracle-working power. Heal the sick. And, and heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. It was the word of God, it was Jesus Christ and their time spent with him that resulted in the su success of their mission and the faith to go. And so it is with us. I am the vine, you are the branches, Jesus said. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, 
You can do nothing. John 15, 5. The 70 were successful on their mission because they were strengthened before they were sent. Their faith was initiated and it rose and it grew as they heard the word of God, as Jesus gave them the authority in his name to heal the sick. I want you to know that that word is not just for the 70. That is a word for you today. He has given you the authority and the power in his name to bring forth miracles in your life and in the life of others. And many times, as we go and we heal the sick, that is one way that disciples can be made. And so it's about teaching us what Jesus taught us. And a big part of that is what we have made available through him. So let's go ahead and let's conclude our time together in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this powerful word. This word that is going to change lives. Because as we preach your word, as your word is taught and shared, people's faith rise and they, it grows. And it strengthens people. And it enables them to do the very uh, supernatural calling that you have on their lives to go into the world and to make disciples. I thank you that living in the new covenant, our part is just to trust you in the journey. We don't need to think of a laundry list of things that we need to, to bring to be successful. We're successful because Christ lives in us and goes with us on the journey. I thank you that as we look at the 23rd Psalm, we're reminded that the, the lambs could not protect themselves. They had to trust the Good Shepherd. And we have the Good Shepherd watching over us, protecting us as we go and we bring forth the gospel into people's lives. I thank you for that. I thank you kept, you kept the 70 safe, that they came back with such joy. And that's my desire for the people who are listening to this message today, that their hearts would be excited in anticipation of the joyous kingdom work they're going to be involved with, the miracle working power that you are going to do through their lives uh, into other people's lives and in, through, in their life uh, too. So Lord, we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise because you are the one, you are the one who is our success. And so as we spend time with you, we are, we are ready to go and we are ready to see what you will bring about, salvation for the lost. And so I thank you for our time together. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.